Welcome back. In the last video, we learned about what is virtual memory and different address translations that translate virtual address to physical address. In this video, we will have an overview on OS161 virtual memory. OS161 virtual memory uses segmentation, and because of its simplicity, it is called dump VM. The virtual memory of a process is defined using a structure address space. Now, let's think of what fields should we add to the address space structure. Recall for segmentation, the virtual address is divided into three parts, code, data, and stack. Each has its own separate map into a contiguous portion of physical memory. So we need to divide the address space struct into three parts, one for code, one for data, and one for stack. Recall that in segmentation, to translate the virtual address in a particular segment, we need to use the relocation register value and limit register value of that segment. So we need to add the physical offset and the limit of each segment. We call the physical offset as p base and the limit as n pages to indicate the size of the segment measured in pages. So now let's add p base and n pages to each segment. Now we have added R and L values for the code and data segment. Let's consider the stack segment. Do we really need to add S and pages 3? The answer is no. Because the size of the stack and the top of the stack are predetermined when we design OS161, and it is assumed that each stack has N pages. So we don't need to add S and pages 3. What else do we need to add to the struct? Given a virtual address, we need to know the virtual offset of each segment in order to determine which segment it belongs to. So let's add vbase as the virtual offset. Do we need to add vbase for the stack? No, because we already know the stack top and the size of the stack, so we can simply use them to calculate vbase 3. Now that we have completed address base struct, we can work on the address translation. The address translation is similar to the segmentation address translation pseudocode given in the previous video, except that instead of using the upper end bits of the virtual address to determine the segment number, we will use 
vbase and mpages. The bottoms of the code and data segments are vbase and the tops are vbase plus the size of the segment, that is, n pages times page size k byte. top of the stack is the stack top and the bottom of the stack is stack top minus the size of the stack that is an s times k If we fold in one segment, then p simply equals to the sum of p base plus the offset. OS161 uses managed TLB and TLB miss exceptions are handled by VM fault. We will discuss the implementation of VM fault later. Let's now focus on how to initialize address space. When kernel creates a process to run a program, it must first create the address space for that process and load the code and data segment of that program into the address space. There are two ways to load the code and data. OS161 preloads before the program runs. Other operating systems load pages on demand. The advantage of preload is that it is very simple to implement. The drawback is that it is inefficient since some parts of the code and data may not be used.
The advantage of load on demand is that it is very efficient since it only loads demanded pages. And the drawbacks very obvious. It is difficult to implement. OS one six one uses ELF file format to store the code and data segments of a program. ELF stands for executable and linkable format, meaning that we can use the ELF to run the program or pass the ELF to a linker. One Cisco that is closely related to address space initialization is exacv. It reinitializes the address space and run with given arguments. Program is the name of the elf to be loaded into the address space. Args are the arguments to rerun the process with. To initialize an address space, we need to load the ELF. So next, let's understand the ELF format. First of all, ELF has an ELF header. The header always starts with 0x7f. This is the ELF magic number, which indicates that the file is an ELF. ELF header also contains one entry for the Indianness, whether it is little or big Indian, one entry for the target operating system, one entry for the target machine, that is, the target instruction, and other entries useful when we load the ELF. Then, there are the program headers for each segment. The program header contains the virtual address of the start of the segment, the length of the segment in the virtual address, location of the segment in ELF, length of the segment in ELF. We use program header to project the segment into the virtual memory. There are one program header to describe the code segment, one to describe the data segment, and other entries to describe other useful information, such as debug info, which is used by debugger. Symbol table and string table, which are used by linker and compiler in symbol resolution. The rest of the ELF are the segments themselves. The images of the code and data segments are to be loaded into the address space code and data segments respectively. 
If the image size is smaller than the segment size, the rest of the segment is zero filled. Now, let's consider why ELF doesn't contain stack as one of its segment. That is because stack starts with empty, so we have nothing to be projected into the address space. At the end of this video, you are expected to know the structure of OS161 .vm, .vm address translation, difference between preload and load on demand, exact v, overall structure of the ELF format, and why it doesn't contain stack segment.